Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing folate deficiency and how it relates to uh, macrocytic anemia. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mad Medicine, you can find a comprehensive playlist for the hemonc section for step one. Just go to our YouTube channel to search uh, hemonc and you'll find the playlist. This this uh, topic today is very high yield because I got tested on this on my step one exam. So definitely something you want to know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you guys don't already, uh, if you guys haven't already done so. And with that being said, let's talk about macrocytic anemias. These are anemias that are classified by an MCV that is greater than 100. Normally, it's going to be 80 to 100. That should be the normal MCV, the volume of red blood cells because this is a macrocytic red blood cell, you're going to have a large volume as depicted by the image on the right. The hemoglobin and hematocrit are going to be low to normal, but the MCH and the MCHC, the, the hemoglobin concentration and the mean corpuscular hemoglobin are going to be uh, slightly elevated just because you have a larger red blood cell that is more filled with hemoglobin. So just keep that in mind. Now, this is going to be subdivided based off of megaloblasts. And megaloblastic anemia occurs due to nuclear defects and deficits. And you can also have non-megaloblastic anemias that occur uh, because of non-nuclear deficits. So we're going to talk about all of these causes of megaloblastic anemias and non-megaloblastic anemias. But today, we're going to be discussing folate deficiency uh, in this video. So let's start talking about folate. This is the chemical structure of folate. It is found in green leafy vegetables and it's absorbed in the jejunum. Okay. Now when it comes to uh, the liver, there is a small storage reserve in the liver, but that's very important to understand that the storage amount is small. You only uh, have about three to four months worth of folate in your liver. And if you have a deficiency, symptoms of megaloblastic anemia will start to rise, uh, will start to manifest three to four months after they become uh, uh, deficient in their intake of folate. So after three to four months, the liver stores will become depleted and you will see uh, 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 defects and symptoms of folate deficiency. So it takes three to four months. Whereas vitamin B12, uh, just a side note, vitamin B12 takes a longer time because you have years worth of storage in your liver of vitamin B12. Now, this is mo the most common vitamin deficiency worldwide that you should know about. And it's important because folate is a very important part of DNA and RNA synthesis. I wrote this in red because this is very high yield. In fact, it's high yield as fuck, so you guys should definitely not forget why folate is important. We're going to talk more about this in the biochemistry section, so you know, just go there. But for now, just understand that folate is very important for RNA and DNA synthesis. It is converted to tetrahydrofolate from dihydrofolate via dihydrofolate reductase. Again, all of this is covered in biochemistry. We're just giving you guys a complete, uh, sorry, a quick recap of what's happening because this is a very complex mechanism, a very complex cycle you need to know for step one, especially when it comes to folate and vitamin B12 and where they play their roles in DNA and RNA synthesis. Folate is also associated with, uh, sorry, folate deficiency is associated with chronic hemolytic anemias, with alcoholism, malabsorption like tropical sprue or celiac disease, and uh, neural tube defects in an infant as well as medications. All of this makes sense because all of this, these three things are going to affect the GI tract for sure. Neural tube defects are going to affect the, the development of a baby. And these medications, phenytoin, methotrexate, and TMPSMX affect uh, the the Im they impact folate directly for some of these medications, but pretty much they are anti-metabolites. So meaning it becomes very difficult for your body to produce DNA and RNA because of these drugs. They can be given for many, many reasons for seizures. It can be given for, uh, uh, right here, uh, TMPSMX is often given for infections. Methotrexate is also given for cancer. So just know all these things. Now, all of these reasons, all of these things are going to cause megaloblastic anemia simply because you have impaired DNA and RNA synthesis. Remember we said earlier, for folate is very important for DNA and RNA synthesis. Well, if you destroy your stores, right, if you don't have enough absorption and you run out of folate, well, at the end of the day, 
that's going to lead to an impaired uh, DNA and RNA synthesis. Your body isn't going to be able to synthesize DNA and RNA. So let's talk about the findings you're going to see, and we're going to finish off with this. You're going to see macrocytic megaloblastic anemia for sure, but the key thing you're going to notice, and this is very high yield, this is very pathognomonic for folate deficiency and vitamin B12, is hypersegmented neutrophils. This is going to happen in megaloblastic anemia, okay? All right, so let's see what they actually look like. This is a hypersegmented neutrophil. As you can see, there are so many segments. There are more than three. You're, normally, a neutrophil has about three segments, right? That's This is what a neutrophil looks like. Well, when you have more than three segments, that happens because during the production of a neutrophil, it was not able to uh, replicate enough uh, and get rid of those extra segments in the nucleus. That's why you have a hypersegmented neutrophil. Usually it goes from here to a normal looking neutrophil with three segments and then you have your neutrophil, okay? But because you have defective RNA and DNA synthesis, the body, the red, the, the white blood cells are not able to get rid of those extra lobes and that's why you get the hypersegmented neutrophils. Very high yield. Homocystinemia can also happen, and that increases the risk of a DVT, atherosclerosis as well. But you're not going to see any neurologic symptoms. That's very important, very, very important, because this is different from vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay, you are going to see them in vitamin B12. Now, you're also going to see normal methyl, uh, methylmalonic acid levels, and this can cause neural tube defects in a fetus if a patient is pregnant. Very high yield association. If you want to, uh, if, if a patient is planning to get pregnant, it is very important to make sure that that patient is taking adequate levels of folate and vitamin B12 before conceiving. That's very important. It's not, you know, during the patient being pregnant only. It's about them taking good levels of vitamin B12 and folate before they start to conceive in order to prevent any neural tube defects from occurring. Because if you guys remember from embryology, near the neural tube forms very early on. So it usually forms uh, before they're going to come to see you in, the, in the, the clinic a lot of times. So you want to make sure that they have adequate levels of vitamin B12 and folate in their blood so there are no neural tube defects occurring. And that's it. That is folate deficiency as it pertains to macrocytic anemias, megaloblastic macrocytic anemias. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if it was helpful. Follow us on our social media accounts and you can watch and listen to this video on your favorite podcast for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up. Thank you so much for watching.